welcome to Elements of Ayurveda, Empowering Wisdom of Life. I'm your host, Colette, and in this podcast, I hope to empower you to take charge of your own health by sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition from India. We will also discuss topics like health and wellness, nutrition, yoga, fitness, meditation, breath work, and much more, as well as interviewing lots of inspiring people along the way. My humble wish is to help you to connect to your true nature, to Mother Nature, and to each other. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe to the show, and the new episodes will automatically download for you to enjoy. If you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend you listen to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. I've also set up a Facebook group for us to connect and to support each other. And I'd love for you to join me over at Elements of Ayurveda podcast group. And now here's the show. Hey there and welcome back to Elements of Ayurveda. In today's show, I'm going to introduce you to Melissa, who is a client of mine. And the reason I'm bringing Melissa on the show today is because she's a busy working mom, like lots of you out there, busy working moms and dads. And I wanted to bring her on the show so she could talk about her experience with Ayurveda and leading a very busy lifestyle trying to raise her three girls and having several creative passions that she also likes to do. And we talk about the importance of putting your care, your self-care first, being the hub of the family. It's so important to take care of you first. And a lot of times, you know, when I'm talking to moms and dads, the health gets put on the back burners. Like I'll think of that later when I have more time, but really it needs to be put on the front burner and it needs to be taken care of because you are the hub of the family and therefore you need to be in balance and have clarity of mind and have lots of energy in order for the family to function well. Because if you're running on empty, you have very little energy for people around you. So we really focus in on that today and why it's so important to take care of you first. So I hope you enjoy the show. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Melissa Fassel Dunn, who is an entrepreneur, an artist, and a mother of three girls. She owns two businesses, one, The Milton Scene, a local news and events website in Milton, Massachusetts, a town just outside of Boston, and the other, Bonita Creative, which provides digital marketing and strategy services that help small businesses with their ongoing web marketing needs. Melissa is also the host of Broad Appeal, a show about boss women and queen bees, which airs on Milton Access TV and YouTube. The show features interviews with strong female leaders and entrepreneurs from the area, as well as a variety of segments that are useful and fun. When Melissa isn't running one of her many businesses or filming, you can find her in her art studio painting colorful, whimsical landscapes. Melissa, you're a busy woman. I am a busy woman. My <laughs> your cleanse <laughs> goodness do we have a little bit of pitta going on here <laughs> Just a tiny bit i think i broke the quiz <laughs> you were pitta squared <laughs> yes yes i think i broke it but yeah i i have a ton of things going on and that's kind of how i've always been right and it's great you're very creative um and this is what i want to share with people today i want to share your story and thank you for coming on the show today because uh, uh, melissa contacted me back in july of 2018 and you stumbled upon the podcast episode change your schedule change your life right melissa that's right mm-hmm. yeah i was googling change your schedule change your life and i found your podcast oh so. really <laughs> Serendipitous. Yes. Very good. And in your initial email to me, you said uh, you have been gradually adding weight, which was very unlike you over the past three years. You've tried so many things to stop, but it, nothing seems to be working. And I could really hear your frustration in that email. Can you tell me how you were feeling at that time when you contacted me, both physically and mentally? Yeah, I mean, definitely extremely frustrated. So being a really hits a person, I, um, I was super frustrated because when I see a problem, I want to 
figure out the solution, develop a plan, execute the plan. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of been spinning my wheels for a few years. I'm really not the type of person who um, historically has put on weight. You know, um, I've always been a pretty healthy eater, exercise regularly, maybe too much. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And yeah, so when I when I found you, I was just not in a good place. I was super frustrated. I mean, it had been three years of kind of like, what is going on? Yeah. And you had gone down many roads in those three years. I remember when we first spoke, you had a whole list you went to naturopath, you did juice cleansing, you did acupuncture, energy healing. Oh my God, I did it all. I tried everything. You know, I started with the traditional route, which was Mm -hmm. I went to my doctor and I was like, what is going on? Mm. And because it wasn't really a lot of weight, I was not you know, technically even overweight. It was just for me, it was a lot, you know? Right. And she kind of looked at me like I had three heads, right. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you're yeah. fine. Your labs are fine. Uh, you know, maybe yeah. work out, you know? Yeah. And the thing is that it's just, that's such a, a shame that they had a reaction like that because even though it wasn't a huge amount of weight, like you said, but, but obviously it was affecting you. So it, obviously it was a problem for you. You know, so it's not a great reaction to get like, uh, it's not such a big deal. You know, it is a big deal when it's affecting you. Exactly. Mm. And, you know, and then it starts to, pun intended, it starts to weigh on you mentally because you're like, what is happening? I don't, I didn't even feel like myself. I Mm. felt like someone else. Right, you know, and right. that's really disconcerting. Yeah, I hear that a lot, actually, when people are feeling off that like they're just not feel, feeling like something's not working right, but feeling that they're just don't know what's going on. And also that they feel very disconnected from their their true nature. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was exactly how I was feeling just, you know, and I would even I would look in the mirror and I would be like, you know, I just I didn't feel like me at all. And mm. I think another part of that is because I had historically, you know, I have three kids and I had done the pregnancy thing and, you know, you have to lose your pregnancy weight. And I always had these sort of things that worked for me, you know, yeah, Breast, yeah. breastfeed the kid, right? Um, you know, get some exercise, eat right and you're fine. And mm-hmm. it just wasn't working. Um, yeah. And your youngest was, I mean, your kids now are in school and older. So what ages are your, your girls again? So right now they're six, nine, and 11. Right. So it had been six years. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I yeah. had lost the weight from that mm-hmm. child. Mm-hmm. You know, I had lost it and I was all back to normal and done with the, the kid thing. Right. And, um, you know, and then it just kind of crept back up slowly. Yeah. It was very slow and sneaky. Right, right. And so you, we went on to do the consult and I was giving you lots of advice about how to balance yourself. And we discussed in detail about your food and your routines and mindfulness practices. How did you initially feel about the advice I was giving you about the, uh, the changes to your lifestyle? Because I was definitely trying to take into consideration you have a very busy life you know, your family, work. How did you feel about those adjustments? I mean, they were hard. Mm -hmm. For the for the pit of people out there, it's really hard to be told, you know, (laughs) you have to take a break, you have to you really have to slow down. Right. Um that was really difficult for me Mm -hmm. because I'm just so driven and that's how I run you know yeah yeah. and your pitta vata so it's like both of those constitutions uh, types you know are really about being active and and go 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 and focused and driven right right and so when someone's like well maybe you could just uh breathe (laughs) it's like being told to cut a limb off you know (laughs) right so, so yeah, at first I was like, oh God, I don't mm-hmm. know if I can do this. You know, I, I have to slow down and breathe and get to bed on time and mm-hmm. all these things. They felt- yeah. Cause you were working late after the girls went I to was. bed, weren't you? Yeah. I was, what I would do is I would work all day and mm-hmm. then the girls would go to sleep mm-hmm. and then I would work some more. That was my whole routine. And mm-hmm. it was funny because I remember speaking to friends about that, like, oh, you mean you just chill out and watch tv or read a book you don't work (laughs) every night i don't watch i don't do that and they're like what (laughs) right right yeah you were on from the moment you woke up yeah yeah and even not only working but your exercise then was quite intense as well 
I was, I was doing, um, you know, I had been doing a lot of, I think this is a lot of what got me into trouble. I had been doing a lot of hit, um, training, right, right. um, and weight training, but I really think the hit training was just too much, particularly when you're already drained, Yes, you know, and, and then you're stressing your body that way. It's just, it's not a good combination. So I, I changed really significantly my exercise routine as well. Yeah. I remember talking to you about, yeah, walking, going out in nature and walking. And that's what you, you changed to, right? You started doing more walks in nature. I did. And even today, I mean, it's, you know, right here it's, it's winter and it's cold, but mm -hmm. I still try to get out as much as I can when the weather is at least halfway decent. Right. Um, and take, you know, even just a half an hour walk. Great. I love it. Yay. Yeah. So, so those routines have kind of stayed with you then. They have the walking. I try to get, you know, I try to get to bed by 11. That's Great. what I need to do. Okay. Um, you know, so that has stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've really stuck to, uh, a good eating schedule. Good. So good. So important. Yeah. Before I felt like I was one of those people that ate a lot of small meals. Okay. Um, and you know, you get that advice a lot. Yes. The old right? six meals. Yeah. Six small meals a day. Yeah. That used to be the old advice. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe at one point that did work for me. I don't know, but it wasn't working anymore. And so now I've really, even though I'm a pitta, I've gotten it down to three. Sometimes, sometimes I need a stack. Sometimes yeah. it's four. Yeah. Um, but I also eat within, I try to eat within 12 hours. Fab. Oh, that's great. Great. So you stop eating by the seven ish time. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I try my absolute best. And I do think that helps a lot because it, it gives my body lot. time to rest. Yeah, it's huge. It really is. And that's a very simple thing that anybody can incorporate. Stop eating at seven. So at least you have at least three hours to digest before going to bed. And not only does it help with your weight, but your digestion and also just mentally the next day, it's huge that that heavy food is not sitting on digesting your stomach, which causes all that fogginess the next day. Absolutely. Well, great. That's music to my ears that that has hung on in there. And so after that initial consult where, you know, I, I, I gently encouraged you to do these changes. Um, I highly recommended a cleanse for you because I felt that you really need to just reset completely. And you yes. decided to go forward with a cleanse in August. So we tailored the food and the yoga, the meditation, the breath work, all that to you. And I also had to make sure because the girls were on school vacation and so they were at home during, or, or at least you were, you know, you were with them a lot during the summer. Um, so can you tell us about that experience on the cleanse and, um, and, and what it was like for you, the foods, the lifestyle, the little, the modifications we made and handling that with the family? Sure. So, I mean, the, the great thing was the schools were, the girls were on vacation, but they were at camp, um, That's during nice. the day. So yeah. that was helpful. Um, you know, to be able to have that time to mm -hmm. make sure that I could eat at a certain time and, and whatnot. But at first, I'm going to be honest, I was really hungry. <laughs> I know. I think we, we were in touch a lot the first few days. Yeah. And it's normal to be hungry because until your body bur turns over into that, that fat burning zone, the first two days, I warn people you're going to be hungry. And plus you have a, you know, a strong pit digestion. Right. Right. And it was different also for me. I mean, I typically eat, I think, um, when I'm not on the cleanse, I do eat a little bit more protein. Mm -hmm. um, so that was an adjustment as well. It, and mm -hmm. the other thing was I was really avoiding carbs yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah. I was avoiding them too much. Yeah, that's um, a big thing now. People are, we're so conditioned from hearing about all these specialized diets thinking carbs are bad. Yeah, yeah. yes, that makes sense. I think a lot of the, the reasons I've maintained since the cleanse is the um, adding back carbs. Mm -hmm. Great. So anyway, so I was hungry at first. I did a lot of batch cooking. Yes, um, I think I shared with you, I used my Instant Pot for my yes, kitchen. Yes, yes, yes. And ha tell us how that worked out because I don't have an in Instant Pot. It, you know, it worked out great, particularly if, you know, you're someone like me and you have a very busy lifestyle. But even if you're not, it just, it cooked it faster for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I cooked it the traditional way as well. And it, it was the same. Um, I did, I missed salads, yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. Right. But it was only for, you know, it was for a short period of time. Right. You um, had the specialized foods for the week. So 
it's, exactly. it's, it's easy to get your head around that. So worth it because a lot of the cleanses that people go on, I mean, I was hungry, but that was because of the adjustment to the way mm. I was eating. I feel like not so much because of the actual food, mm. you know, for example, a juice cleanse. Right. I, I mean, that's a totally different kind of cleanse. You're starving. You're yeah. just starving. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time. Right. And it's not necessarily good for either for you, for example, being pitta and vata, the juicing would be very cold. It's raw. So really bad for your vata. And then for pitta, it's just not enough, substantial enough for you. So that right. is a recipe for disaster for making pitta hangry. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That was awful. Yeah. I will never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> not good, not good. We don't want hangry pittas. <laughs> no, no more juice cleanses. <laughs> there you go. So you did the batch cooking. That's great. Yep. I love that. And um, and then how did you find, how did you experience the week with bringing in some of the mindfulness practices as well? So I, that was really hard for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what made it easier for me um, was doing the nature walks because the nature walks was a way for me to be moving Mm -hmm. as a pitta, Mm -hmm. but to also be able to be a little bit meditative. Right. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I do think it's quite hard for a pitta to kind of sit and chill out because I think as a, a, you know, primarily pitta constitution myself, it's everything really, we want everything to have a purpose. So sitting there meditating is like, really? I'm just going to sit here it's and hard. meditate. It is. It's hard. Yes. Yeah. And now I've obviously got used to it over, over the years, but it is hard because we're so conditioned to like, everything must have a purpose and why am I doing this and what are the results I'm going to get? Exactly. And and I did do it. You, you were like, okay, just do it for five minutes. In the morning. <laughs> and I did try to do that. And you know, I, I, this is so hilarious. I have a Fitbit and on my Fitbit, watch there's a setting where it's like a breathe it's like a meditation setting and right. so it times you and you can do it for five minutes and that helps me as well because oh, you see you had a goal helped- <laughs> yeah <laughs> pitta had a goal <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> no it's not it's whatever works it's whatever yeah. works and this is why you know it's so important to tailor it to each individual because when we have that 90 minute consult i really go in depth on a person's life and lifestyle and what's going on and then I adapt it to them because there's no point in me being really black and white about it and go, no, you have to do this. And if you don't do that, it's wrong. It's like, no, we have to find what works for you in your lifestyle you and your constitution. To. Yeah. Because otherwise it it'll just be miserable. Be, exactly. It cannot be one size fits all. That just mm-hmm. doesn't work. No, not at all. Appreciated your salary. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> so is there anything else that you experienced during the cleanse week? You know, there was a point where I was, I think I got a little tired, um, Mm -hmm. but nothing, you know, nothing insurmountable, anything like that. It was just something that I think it it was just releasing. I have a feeling that there was a lot being released. And and in hindsight, I know there was a ton being released, Right. you know, emotionally, but physically also just, I I had um, just accumulated all of this. I feel like in, in hindsight, it was fluid almost, you okay, know. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a big thing for you as well, because we had to look at the, the stressors in your life. So along with looking at your food and lifestyle, we delve deep into the stressors of your life, which were definitely affecting your health, right? Definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, how can they not? I feel like that's... Absolutely. Normal. Absolutely. So we, and we talked about that a lot. And we also talked about the importance of your creativity and developing or redeveloping your creativity because you told me that you loved to paint. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you know, what we talked about too was, I think you sort of gave me permission to do that just mm-hmm. for fun. Right. <laughs> Right. And that is so important, again, bringing out the the Vata creative side for your health. And a lot of times, you know, in your situation where you weren't too keen on sitting doing the meditation, I was like, well, your painting could be meditative for you. And it is. It is. And I, I, you know, because of what we talked about, I realized that it was meditative as well. I had never put that term to it, you Mm -hmm, know? mm -hmm. So yeah, when I paint, there's something about that creating that shuts off a piece of my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the cognitive mind is just shut off and you're just totally in the moment. 
Yeah, and it's glorious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I absolutely think that doing painting or sketching or whatever create, creative activity for some people it could be cooking, if anything that you get caught up in and makes you forget about the day to day stressors it is a meditative process for you. Oh, I 100% agree. I mean, mm-hmm. I think about gardening as well. It's the yes. same sort of thing. Yes. Um, oh. But I think it's just so important to give ourselves permission to do these things. That's the thing. Yeah. And that's yeah. another, you know, pitta thing as well is not being on, not, uh, you know, again, having that everything has to have a purpose. Like, uh, why, what is this painting? Why am I painting? You know, what is this for? But it can just right. be for your mental health, just for enjoyment. And that's, you know, a lot for the pitta constitution is just having moderation and not doing things for a purpose, but maybe just doing something because you enjoy it and not everything has to be 110% all the time. Absolutely. And you know, what's funny is um, I had been asked a few weeks ago by a friend kind of out of the blue to paint a um, uh, scene for a Christmas card for Mm -hmm. this organization called Volunteers of America. And, Mm -hmm. you know, he was like, I really like your work. It's I feel like you could give a message of hope, that sort of thing. And I would, in the past, I would have said, Oh, God, I just, I don't have time. How am I going to fit this on? And, you know, this time I was like, okay, it it is a short period of time that I have to get it done, but I'm going to be able to enjoy myself every night for three weeks by painting this. I love it. And just having that awareness and like you said, giving yourself permissions like, oh, well, this is something that it bring me enjoyment. It's meditative for me. It's relaxing. That's right. Like, and at the end he's like, oh, thank you so much. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I should be thanking him, (laughs) you know, thank you for giving me something to do (laughs) that will help me relax, you know? Yeah, it's just bonuses all around. Well, I love that, that you have, um, you know, really got back into your art because had it gone by the wayside? Am I correct in thinking that for a little while? A little bit. Okay. A little bit. So I love that you're back and and your artwork is amazing as well. So I love that you're doing that. And um, also in October, you put a before and after image in the our private Facebook group that I have from clients and just showing your progress after the cleanse and, and, you know, doing the, some of the self care practices. And I think that's such a great idea. I don't, of course, enforce it because some people might be uncomfortable, but I do think it's a great idea for yourself to take a before and after photo because I don't think we really grasp the changes physically that occur in our body. And I know it really helped a lot of people in the group when they saw your changes. How did you feel once you saw those physical changes in your body? I I was blown away. Mm. I really was. I had, it's funny. And I had not even remembered that I took that before photo. I had taken it probably about a month or so before you and I even found each other. Oh, and, and I had randomly had it. And, um, you know, because I was, I was like, what is happening? And I wanted some sort of being a pizza. I wanted some sort of evidence and proof of what was going on. Right. You know, so I, I had had that and I was really thrilled that I had it because I took Mm -hmm. the after picture a few months later and it wasn't right after the cleanse that I took it. Um, I think I, I think I took it in early September now that I'm remembering. So I took a photo in early September and I just having them side by side, Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe you could see, you could see all this fluid had been released. Yeah. And the shape had completely changed. Completely. And you know, it wasn't, I think all in all, I might've lost about eight, pounds or so but it looked like right. it looked like way more exactly and that's it i that's why i tell people not to even look at the numbers no. because it, that does not correlate at all that i think taking a before and after for yourself is a great idea yeah i saw those changes i'm like wow that's amazing and it encouraged me to be like oh maybe i should suggest it more to clients um but yeah and it's great reminder for you as well you know if like after the holidays you're feeling like you go out of routine a little bit and that is like okay I know what I have to do and this is the results I get when I do it. Hey, so I'm jumping in here because if you're now saying to yourself, I want those results, I want to let you know about my Reset, Restore, Renew program, which is starting on January 18th. 
2019, so not long away. And this is a transformational seven week journey. It's of healing, connection, education, and empowerment. Basically, there's three steps. We're going to reset your digestive system, which houses up to 80% of your immunity. We're going to number two, restore your physical and mental health with rejuvenating foods and practices to build a strong foundation of health and well being. And finally, number three, we're going to renew your life by helping you to understand your unique mind-body type and learn how to live your life, what to eat, how to exercise, what daily self-care habits are going to keep you in balance, preventing disease and giving you energy and passion for life. So if you're interested in doing this seven-week online program, click on the link in the show notes or just visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com. I also have a competition for a chance to win a free entry into this Reset, Restore, Renew program over on my website. I'll put a link to that competition in the show notes also. The competition closes December 31st, 2018. So be sure to enter that competition for a chance to win a free entry into my online program. And also, if an online program is not for you, a seven-week program is not for you, you just want to do a cleanse, I also offer that. I also offer a private cleanses throughout the year. So please check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com. And now let's go back to my chat with Melissa. So tell me now, Melissa, about the mental, emotional changes that have occurred for you since the cleanse. Um, have you, we talked about physically, how about mentally and emotionally now? So I'm, I find myself um, a lot less hot. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a little less, there's less heat, uh, right. less of that pit, pit, like, you know, speed to anger, that sort oh, of yeah, thing. Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah. Honestly, until we, you just asked me this right now, I, I didn't realize that that was one of the changes as well. Fully, mm. I, I'm just not as quick to get angry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I always, I've shared a couple of times in these episodes how I used to be a volcano. Like I used to get angry mm-hmm. so fast. But isn't it wonderful when you can manage your emotions? better. Oh, absolutely. It just changes everything. It does. I mean, and you can think so much more clearly too. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I know you probably understand this feeling too, as a pity, you can actually feel the heat rising in your body. Oh yeah. Um, and I haven't felt that in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can feel it. Like you feel like you're turning beetroot as the, as the heat is coming up and then, you know, you have that sharp tongue. So it's like mm. anything could come out and things could come out that you are going to regret, but there's just like, there's no filter because when that heat rises so fast and so abruptly that, you know, beware, the volcano is about to explode. So that's when we can have that filter now and have that, that, that calmness and that those moments to reflect on how we react to a situation and not have that instant heat rise and that where we get out of control. I think that's just huge. It is. It really, it affects your entire life. It affects mm-hmm. your relationships mm-hmm. and it, it affects you so much. I mean, no one wants, no one wants to feel like that. Right. Exactly. And can you imagine what it's doing to your body once you're, you're literally going into like the, that fight mode, fight yeah. or flight mode. Your everything is just the blood must is going from your digestion and uh, organs and is just going to the exterior as if you are going into battle basically. Exactly. Like you're yeah. going to go fight a tiger. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, every day. <laughs> and it could just be that someone cut you off on the highway. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. And it's, so now mm-hmm. I find that I'm much cooler, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's wonderful to hear that. And I think that's huge. Like you said, not only for yourself and your own health, but also for your relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. The energy is Absolutely. a lot better. Mm-hmm. I'm able to take the deep breath, before, you know, when the kids do something outrageous right. to you on that. <laughs> and how about have they, have you incorporated anything for them that you've learned? I, you know, I've tried to encourage my husband at, mm. at the very least. He's, he, 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 I told you I broke the pitta quiz. He has broken the vata quiz. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I said, well, you know, at the very least, maybe you could, for example, eat your meals 
within 12 hours and not Mm -hmm. be snacking late at night. And, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I feel like you'll feel better. But um, the other thing is we've started, believe it or not, we've actually started eating kitchery fairly regularly in the family. That's great. Oh, really? Even the kids? Well, yeah, even, well, one of them is a real foodie. Two two of them like it, the other one not so much. Okay. You know, but it's, um, my husband loves it. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh, that's so good for his vata too. Very grounding. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, and it's funny because I've heard and read about people who after the cleanse never want to see kitchery again. And I was like, I kind of like it to be very honest. Yeah, I love (laughs) it. I have it at least every once every few weeks. It's one of my Mm go-tos. Yeah. No, it's, I, I find it so nourishing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's grounding. I mean, especially mm-hmm. like this time of year here um, mm-hmm. in Boston, it's cold and it's comforting. Right, exactly. Well, that's great to hear. You see, you yeah. are making, you are making uh, changes. And I think it just happens naturally with the family, which is nice because, you know, you're the, you're the one doing the cooking sometimes. So it's great that you can share that with them. And absolutely a bit of benefit for them. That's wonderful. So they'll drink the tea that you recommend all the time too in the cleanse. Fantastic. I feel like that's very helpful. Yeah, the CCF tea. Or you're on CF. I'm on CF. <laughs> that's yes. right. And I, mm-hmm. I couldn't have that extra C. <laughs> no, no, no. So the cumin, coriander, and fennel for some pitas, if there's a lot of heat, I cut out the cumin because it's just too much heat. And isn't that wonderful to have on an ongoing basis? Absolutely. I feel like that, you know, in combination with the other things that really helps to keep me from sort of accumulating this fluid and these toxins. I I, I know when my rings get tight, for example, I have to drink more tea and, and it works. Yeah, it's a diuretic. So it just flushes all that excess, excess water out of the body. Yeah, it's wonderful. That was that in the kitchen. Really, I, I, you know, I've really held on to those. Great. Well, that's good to hear. I love that. And so what advice would you give to anybody out there today, you know, particularly moms who are working and trying to, you know, keep the family happy? And what advice would you give? I would definitely, the first thing I would do, and and, you know, I think the first thing actually is to remind people that you don't have to do it all at once. You can start Mm -hmm. slowly with some of these changes. Right. Um, So I would start with eating on a better schedule, you know, trying to keep your meal, not so many meals and trying to keep them within a shorter hourly window. Mm -hmm. Um, and one thing I also try to do is eat most, you know, the bulk of my food in that, that midday lunch meal, if I can. Great. Um, you know, I think it's important to rest our digestion and I do think walking, not killing yourself with exercises, even just walking, Mm -hmm. you know, as much as you can, I feel like is so helpful Um, so that would be my second thing. Um, and then I would say, you know, give the cleanse a try. It's, it's three weeks of your life. Only one of which is really significant. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not like I promise everyone out there. It's not like any other cleanse you've ever done before. There's no powdered drinks. There's no, (laughs) you know what I mean? There's none of this nonsense. You're not going to be First two days, you might be a little uncomfortable because of the change in the schedule, but you're not going to be starving Mm -hmm. for three weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I do feel like it's really worth it also to eliminate and to release a lot of that emotional buildup that can come with being a mom and a partner and a person. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And we talked a lot, I know, about self-compassion. Yeah. Has that been something that's been on your list Has stayed with you? It has. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has. I, you know, even permission to take a bath, permission to permission to go to bed and not work. Right. Right. I know as moms, there is this is it's, you know, you you could always be doing something, I'm sure. Right. As a mother, you're there's always something to be done. But at sometimes it's it's so important to have those self care practices, because if you're running on empty, and I've said this before in podcasts, you are the hub of the family it always comes down to mom. And if you're running on empty, it's going to affect everybody in the family. It is. And the other thing to bring up, I mean, I'm, I'm a mom of girls, but this is for moms of boys as well. It's good for your children to see you taking care of yes. yourself and taking a break and knowing that, you know what, you can't come in here right now. Mommy's taking a bath, like yeah. off limits. I'm yeah. closed. Yeah. And setting those boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
because these people are going to grow up and they're either going to be, you know, they might be moms themselves or partners themselves. And if they're, you know, little boys, this is the example that they see from the women in their lives, you know? I think that's a very good point. And I read an article this week on that is how it's important not to let your children uh, run the roost as it were rule your life that you know it's important to set up those boundaries where no this is mommy time and you know this is my time and you go entertain yourself that it's not that the the children um are not not running things and and therefore then going out into life going hey why isn't everybody running around like my parents did <laughs> aren't i the most important person in the world here <laughs> what do you I, think I, of that a hundred percent agree. Mm. And I, it's funny because I do think, um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of trends are like a pendulum swing, yes, right? Yes, you know, yeah. when I grew up, <laughs> when I grew up, it was like, I don't know, go, you know, to go entertain yourself <laughs> right. all, all on you. And yeah. I think a lot of people my age had that experience. Mm -hmm. And then I think we swung in the other direction where we became these, you know, always on helicopter types yeah. where, we're almost not even letting the kids be kids. Right, right. They need time and, to breathe too. Right. The kids mm -hmm. need time to breathe and you need time to breathe. And, mm -hmm. and I think we have to try to, again, you know, going back to Ayurvedic principles, find that balance so mm -hmm. that it's not one side of the pendulum or the other. Right. Yeah. So yeah, where the kids, we have time. Yes, exactly. And I think that's important, you know, and again, for those moms out there who are feeling they have to be on all the time, you know, this, you know, give yourself permission have some self-compassion, take care of yourself. You need your time out. You cannot run, you know, on, on full all the time. You need that down cycle where you get to recharge your body. And I promise your kids will adapt. They will. Right. And it's good, like we just said, to give them time to, to breathe, for them to have that space for their independence to flourish. Right. And their own, you know, their own creativity yeah. and their own, exactly their own, let their gifts come out. You don't always have to have um, these pre-planned things mm -hmm. and every minute scheduled. They can have time to just figure it out. Yeah. It's just entertain yourself. Yeah. It's a very good yeah. point you make, though. I think the pendulum has just swung the opposite way. And now we need to come back a little bit uh, to have, you know, involvement in the children's lives, but not over planning and over scheduling them. Exactly. And to your point, we don't want to create these adults who cannot handle right. life because right. no one's doing it for them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Point. Exactly. And then nobody's giving them the attention and they're like, um, hello, my parents right. said I me. was the most important thing in the world. Exactly. So yeah, yes, absolutely. We need to it, raise children who have the humility and, and just the yeah, creativeness and, and independence. And that's important. A hundred percent agree. So tell me about, I want to ask you about your sleep. Are you sleeping better now? I am sleeping better. Good, Cause I know that was an issue. You're waking up yes. in the early hour at the Vata time, right? I'm, I'm waking up much earlier than I was. I wouldn't say I was waking up super early, <laughs> but I right. am able to wake up during that sort of three period, that three year period that we were discussing in mm -hmm. 2015, 2018, I had a really hard time getting out of bed by before like eight thirty nine. to right. be very honest. Right. It was hard. Yeah. Um, and now I can, you know, mm -hmm. I can, I can get up six thirty seven and not feel like I'm just dragging. Mm-hmm. That's, you know. that's, yeah, that's huge. Cause I know you were, well, you were going to bed later, but then yeah, you were waking up during the night too. Yeah, it was not a good, it wasn't pretty because yeah. I was going to bed too late. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I missed the window to go to bed and right. then I became very Vata. Right. Um, and yeah, it wasn't a restful sleep and now I can sleep and I track it because I'm so pitta. I track mm -hmm. it with my Fitbit and right. you can see, you can actually see see they make graphs so you can see the difference wow. um even in the patterns like the REM sleep yeah that's it's fantastic. fantastic yeah and that's it's great for you to have that because it's something that you like to track you like to have goals and measure things yeah. so it's wonderful that'll keep you on literally on track exactly and one thing that you brought up too um when we chatted during our consultation you know you had said basically that even eight hours from midnight to 8 a.m. is not the same as eight hours from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. or 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Right. 
Right. And that's so true. It's almost like like bonus hours when you get to bed earlier. It's almost like you get two for one. No, it's so true. And those hours before midnight are really important just to digest our food, to digest our thoughts, what happened that day. It's really important to get to bed in that pit of time. It's huge. And yeah. I'm so glad that that change is now made oh. in my life. Huge. Sleep is everything. It absolutely is. I agree so much. Mm. We just need that time to rejuvenate, you know? Especially for moms. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Melissa, it's so great to chat with you, you know, and to share your story. I think it's fantastic. And and, uh, for other moms out there who are trying to hold it down, um, all these super moms out there are busy raising families and working and trying to keep keep it all together. What other advice would you or information would you like to share with the listeners today, particularly those moms out there? Yes. So, Thanks for asking that question because, you know, I, I listen to your podcast regularly and sometimes I think, oh my God, <laughs> it's just, mm-hmm. I can't do any of that. You know, that doesn't yeah. apply to me. There's no way I could do those things sound great, I but I can't do them, you know? Yeah, I hear you. And so I would say, first of all, um, don't, don't stop, you know, if there's some health issue that is bothering you, that is affecting you, don't stop looking for um, help and for trying something else. You know, for me, I had, I tried, like you said, I think like, you know, 50,000 different things. I read yeah. books, I read blogs, but I, I did find it. You mm-hmm. know, I did find the thing that helped me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is, is it just really doesn't have to be perfect. You just do the best that you can. And, you know, you don't have to do it at 110%. Even when I was on the cleanse one day, you know, I, I like ate a cookie or something and right. whatever. I yeah. ate a cookie. So what? Moving so what? on. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yep. So, you know, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. You can still make progress yeah. with these things. And the other thing is, is you can still make progress by backing off a little, mm-hmm. you know? Yes. Yeah, exactly. And giving yourself Which permission. I know yeah, it's counterintuitive, right? Mm-hmm. Well, for a lot of us nowadays, it's all about backing off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, f- I feel like, honestly, I mean, you have a more experience than, than I do with this, but I almost feel like with any of the constitutions, Pitta, Vata, Kapha, I feel like probably everyone could back off a little. Yeah, yeah. You know? oh, we're all definitely have some Vata imbalances, just giving our multitasking world and the mobile devices that we're always on. Um, and it's really in, you know, inducing our, our, our Vata. So yes, we all could learn to back off a little bit. And be okay with it. I feel like that's the most yes, important thing. Yes, exactly. And you know, I love what you just said there as, you know, coming from a Pitta person, high Pitta constitution is it's okay to back off and not do things 110%. And, and, and I love that. I love that you have that awareness now. And I think that simple awareness of being, it's okay. I don't have to be on and producing all the time. I can have my time off. In fact, not only can I have my time off, but it's really good for my health. That's Absolutely. huge awareness. I mean, I'm nodding. You can't see me, but I'm like <laughs> nodding. <laughs> right. <laughs> because it, it's totally true. And, and that awareness even of itself, like you mm-hmm. said, is that can change your whole life. It can. And I think, you know, going meeting with so many clients, and I think that's the big thing about Ayurveda it opens up this whole awareness, like, oh, my gosh, I, you know, I am pushing myself into imbalance by staying up late, by eating late, or whatever it is that you're, it, it's the awareness, it's the education of your mind body type. And then you see like what you're doing to cause the imbalances. And once you have that awareness, then there's more incentive and a want to change. And, Absolutely. um, and it, yeah, it, it's a, a beautiful thing because it gives you, like we talk about this permission today to stop working at a certain time and to chill out. How great advice is that? I want to be on that program. <laughs> You know, exactly. Yeah. I mean, why yeah. wouldn't you want to be on that? Right. Like, you know, at five, five, five thirty, some days late at six, I'm like shutting down the computer, done, getting myself yeah, out stops. of the apartment. You know, that's it. Done. It stops. You know? yes. Exactly. And, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention, which is something I think I am probably going to try after the holidays is I do think we need to do this cleanse regularly. I don't think it's I mean, I'd love it for me 
for it to be once in a lifetime. <laughs> but right. I do yeah. think it, it does need to be done regularly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to further push the non pizza doesn't have to be done at the you know, exactly at the beginning or end of a season, you can right. do it any time. Right, exactly. No, it doesn't. And I do think, yes, absolutely. I'm nodding here. It does need to be done <laughs> regularly because each time what I find, I've experienced each time I do it, and I do it at least twice, if not three times a year, is it goes a little deeper. I get more awareness and it brings me more and more into balance. And yeah, it's each time it gets easier and it's more profound. I bet. I bet. I mean, I'm a little scared to do it again, but I do feel (laughs) like, I feel like, I guess what I, the the better term would be, I feel like I need it. You know, I feel like my body's asking for it, I guess. Well, Um, now, Melissa, you put it out there. (laughs) It's out there now in the world. I know. (laughs) I'm going to go get my my mung beans. (laughs) I'll remind you, remember you said... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right so Melissa it's been fantastic chatting with you today and I think you're going to really help you know a lot of mums out there or a lot of dads you know who are juggling and and trying to keep it all going and just you know reminding us that it doesn't have to be perfect letting go of that perfectionism and that drive so thank you so much you're welcome thank you so much for having me and for oh, giving me an opportunity to talk to these parents you know um, these overwhelmed parents I appreciate yeah, it yeah yeah not being a parent myself I felt that it's really important to have parents on just to you know share that side of things um like you said you know sometimes I'll talk about some things you could bring in and if you're a parent and feeling overwhelmed you're like really Colette I'm not going to get up at, <laughs> <laughs> at 6 a.m and meditate while my child is you know pulling my hair to pull me out of bed or something (laughs) no it's it's just not realistic (laughs) so so melissa tell us where that people can find out more about you and all your wonderful entrepreneurial endeavors you have sure so yeah i start a new business like like every week (laughs) you're a multi-passionate creative yeah, it keeps my life interesting. So you can see my art, which is super colorful and whimsical at melissapaints.com. And you can check out my TV show where I interview women like Colette who are doing just awesome things, you know, kind of writing their own rules. It's called Broad Appeal and you can view that at broadappealtv.com. I love it. And if you're local to the Boston area, um, you can check out my website about uh, Milton Mass on MiltonScene.com. It's got Mm -hmm. lots of news and events. And finally, uh, if you need a website or help with social media, you can check out my my digital marketing website, BonitaCreative.com. And I think that's it for now. <laughs> I love it. It's great. I love it. I love that. And, and I checked out your artwork and I've checked out your TV show and I, it's fantastic. Oh, thank it's you great. so yeah, much. Yeah, I, yeah, have yeah, a, I have a lot of fun. Have a well, lot it's of fun. good. But that's good. It's all that creative vata coming out, which is good for you yes. know to have some fun to calm down the heat. That's wonderful. It's a good balance that's- you have. Thank you so much. It's good to have a little bit more balance now. Yes. All right, Melissa, wishing you happy holidays and to you and your family. And uh, thanks again for sharing your story. It's really going to help the people out there. Great. Thank you. And happy holidays to you as well. Thank you. Take good care of yourself. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that chat with Melissa. It was great to get a perspective from a busy working mom trying to bring in the Ayurvedic principles while juggling family and work life. So I hope you found that useful. Just a reminder again that I have the Reset, Restore, Renew program, which is starting on January 18th, 2019. And I also have that competition that is closing on December 31st, 2018 for a free entry into that seven week online program to reset your digestion, restore your physical, mental health and renew you by installing a new day to day operating system of simple self care practices and empowering you to understand your own mind body type so you can keep yourself in balance, prevent illness, Feel energetic, light, and clear and passionate for life. Thank you for listening in. I hope to connect with you in the future. You can always connect with me through my 
website at elementshealingandwellbeing.com or over on our Elements of Ayurveda podcast Facebook group. You'll find those links in the show notes. Take good care of yourself. Be well. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Ciao for now. Ciao for now.